Right then, so uh, what we're we going to be doing, we are going to be doing a solo campaign. Uh, the reason why I've decided to do a solo campaign is I have a bit of spare time at the minute, so as uh, such I can obviously get this film without the requirement of Sam and John and various others being around. Also we've got a lot of other things going on, um, so um, yeah, quite busy at the minute. Um, but obviously uh, I do get some time away from the store and uh, as such, um, I absolutely love Burrows and Badgers. So, uh, main thanks is to Tim Eaglin, really, to get me into this. Uh, so, uh, do check him out. Uh, that is Magrathia, Builder of Worlds on YouTube. Uh, quite a lot of content for Burrows and Badgers. Also, some really cool uh, narrative battle reports. So, you know, dice rolling and Tim doing his uh, uh, sort of teaching forte of uh, doing voices and uh, putting, obviously, uh, something together that's a little bit different to maybe what you're used to on YouTube. So do go check out Magrathia, Builder of Worlds. Uh, back to this one. Uh, this is going to be a four scenario campaign. Uh, for those that aren't familiar with uh, the Brothers and Badgers Facebook group, uh, go check that out. And in the file section, uh, there was a file that was last updated. I think it was probably around uh, this time, two years ago, actually. Um, and it is a um, file that's been uploaded by Jeffrey Anderson, and um, I'm going to be playing his campaign, his four scenario campaign. So basically, I've got an idea for a new warband. Haven't really got any op opponents at the minute to to play with. As I say, other stuff going on, um, but I really want to get this warband on the table. So easiest thing for me to do is to play the solo campaign. So simple as that. So um, yeah, basically the the first. Uh, scenario is going to be coming up shortly but basically uh, my guys are in this village which is getting uh, attacked by some raiders uh, and as such obviously they need to help the, the local villagers out and uh, try and uh, basically stop the raiders from getting in and uh, doing what raiders do which is raid apparently um, no sex and pillage in this because uh, that would be wrong uh, just raid it okay so uh, what I'll do um, so as they do check out Jeffrey Anderson's uh, uh, file is the BNB solo campaign PDF, uh, which is in the file section on the Burrows and Badgers Facebook page. And upcoming is going to be my warband, um, which is led by a, um, a cat of all things. I don't normally like cats, I must be honest, more of a dog person. I'm a current warband in their campaign, and these stories are there's a whole dog warband. Um, but this one, uh, paint up this. I mean, the thing with all Leo Swarm miniatures, if I'm honest with you, you could pick any of them to be a leader because they're just. They're an absolute joy to paint. Uh, obviously, uh, I mean, I do own all of them now. Uh, although Michael Lovejoy keeps making more, so uh, that pile of shame is going to get grown again. Um, but yeah, literally, like you look at, I mean, a shrew with a frying pan and a rolling pin. I mean, why not? Why not some crazy shrew as your, as your leader? Um, but this guy, um, I'll show you in a minute, um, is basically a nice big cat with a, with a mace and a big shield and some armor. So uh, he looks pretty badass. So he's going to be my uh, new warband leader for this uh, solo campaign. And I'll show you the, him and the rest of his warband literally now and uh, we'll show you that and uh, show the the table and get the game going so uh, hopefully you enjoy as we uh, one of uh, one of four okay so uh, do like and subscribe in order to be notified when the next one comes up uh, and obviously like and comment down below and once more check out the facebook group and check out my career builder awards so i'll see you soon bye bye Okay, so uh, my warband is uh, completed. Uh, for this, uh, we have been given 350 pennies, uh, which I think is about 100 more than a normal starting warband. So 350 pennies gives me a little bit extra to play with. Um, although um, I have got 23 pennies left in the bank. Um, wanted um, the models I, uh, I'm using. Uh, couldn't get anything else in, so I'm going to save that um, and see if uh, I can get something for the next one to get a recruit or something. Um, so, um, my warband is led by Artemis, he's a wildcat, um, so he's armed with a hand weapon, light armour, and light shield. Um, he is carrying a holy relic uh, as a free beast. You get three rolls on the rare table, uh, so he's got a holy relic and also has a dose of paralyzing poison. 
which you can put onto his hand weapon. Um, so he's my big hitter and my number one. My number two or second in command is my hare, which is Theodore the One Eye. And he is armed with a double hand weapon, light armor, and he has a magical ring um, which uh, gives him fear, which is plus one to his presence roll but also makes him fearsome so that's him and the wildcat both have fearsome so that could be uh that could be quite interesting uh but then have sebastian the black rat he's my mage uh, from the natural order and uh, he has cure uh he's got mage's focus and also a pouch although didn't buy any ingredients for him uh, we'll do that at a later point um, and then we have Marek and Luca, the two mice. So uh, these two brothers in arms, uh, one is armed by a, um, or one armed with a hand weapon, which is painted up by my uh, partner Louise. Um, so I wanted to get that one on the table. And then Luca, which is, he's armed with a pole arm and light armor. So that um, gives me 23 pennies short on a free beast warband. So um, we've got to select 10 random, um opponents as the raiders so i've just selected the 10 sort of most raiding looking miniatures i could put my hands on and um they are going to be coming in so um on average it's probably about 400 pennies i would guess with by the time for maybe 450 by the time you put the weapons on now they do come in in stages there's d3 per turn uh, sorry d4 per turn um so that should at least give uh, a little bit of a flow to the game um, and basically what they've got to do, reading the scenario, is uh, the raiders first appeared on the borders and have sent out a scouting party. Uh, the band must hold out for four turns to slow them down so that the civilians can escape over the river. Uh, you must then withdraw all surviving members of the war band to the edge that they entered. Okay, so there's ten random uh, beast raiders. And uh, um, this is played on a four by two. Um, so the two foot marker is basically the hedge line on the side of the board and um, so basically they are going to be coming in and going to be trying to uh, get off the table so uh, victory conditions for myself and the raiders so the raiders will win if they succeed in any of the following they get uh, three models off the defending edge of the board and uh, they take more than half the defenders out of action um, i will succeed if at the end of any round after the first, there is only one raider left on the board, at the end of the turn, raiders that have not achieved their victory conditions and five or more raiders have been taken out of action or they successfully withdraw all surviving models from the raiders, uh, sorry, before the raiders achieve their victory conditions. Okay, so uh, I do need to uh, roll some secondary objectives and select one. So I'm gonna do that now, uh, that's on a D20. So in this solo campaign, uh, there are some alternate secondary objectives. So I'm just gonna use one of those and see what we get. Uh, I've got a six and a seven, so I um, devastate and capture. So if I take four or more of the enemy out in less than, uh, if less than four enemy, all of them. Okay, so if I do that, I get two experience points per guy. Capture, capture three or more pieces of terrain. Um, I mean, I've, I've held the terrain already anyway. Um, also, that's not really fun. Um, I don't want to try and kill these raiders. At the end of the day, so I'm going to go for number six, which is devastate. So I'm looking to kill at least, uh, take at least four of them out of action. Um, so that's the that's the plan. So we'll show you the setup and uh, show you the village, and uh, we'll get started. So here is the village of uh, Lower Itchington, and uh, we have the well in the middle. We have the monument to the old, uh, the old world, as it were. Um, only a little hamlet, this one. Um, Got a few houses there, and, uh, and the river is off to the left of the screen. So we have Luca and um, Marek, the two mice, just in here. Uh, so we'll just have a little zoom in on them, see what they're up to. So they are basically going to sit by the well. Uh, their job really is try and work as a pair if they can. Uh, we then have Sebastian. He's hiding behind this building here uh, with the cure spell. Doesn't really want to be getting in any combat, uh, especially not with delicate and weak. We then have um, Theodore over by the mushroom house. And then just down here, we have Artemis himself. Okay, right, so that is the defending force and they are going to be up against the raiders who are coming in on the right hand side. So we'll get started.
Okie doke, so um, so roll off for first turn and um, my guys get to go first with an 8 versus a 1 for the uh, roll off. So we will start by activating, um, I think we're going to do a, a move move. Or do we, yeah, we're going to go move, move with the mice. So Marek is going to move up to there. Mark him with activated. Okay, so uh, the attackers, uh, if they don't have anyone within range of a weapon, uh, they just move straight forward on a move, move uh, towards the obviously target of trying to chase the villagers out. Um, so we'll start with the um, weasel who is at speed 8 so he's going to go 16 um, I will now activate the other mouse who's going to move up to this piece of terrain here uh, the hedgehog is only moved 6 so he's going to go up to there 12 Just move my mouse, uh, sorry, my rat, Sebastian, round to here. So he's got better line of sight. His spell requires line of sight. Uh, the mole, uh, I think the mole's only D4. Uh, yes, he is. So he's going to go eight up to there. So it just leaves me left to activate. Um, so I'm actually going to. One eye up to there, and then I'm just going to move the cat leader Artemis around into a into a better position there. Okay, so that is the end of round one. Uh, let's see how many more beasts turn up. I've got another three coming in, um, so another weasel coming in here. Um, Frog Mage coming in here, and then a Pug coming in over here. Okay, so there's now six enemy on the board, so now outnumbered. So uh, roll off again. So that, remember the uh, beasts are on D6, I'm on D8. Uh, four beats three, so I get to go first. In round two, just clear the board of activations. Okay, it's quite a critical uh, turn this one. Not too much actually within strike distance in the fact that I'm not going to be able to move and get an attack in. So, I think at this stage, I don't really want the activation if I'm honest. So I think uh, the mouse is going to just move back to here, mark himself as activated. Um, right, okay, so uh, let's have a think. So the frog is going to move six to here. He's going to attempt to cast um, his fiery blast at uh, one eye. So it's got an 18 inch range, so he is in. And um, he is rolling a d6. He has moved, um, so but he needs a five, and he only gets a three. So nothing happens there. As a blast fires off and hits the tree, uh, but that is the first attack from them. Um, Artemis is going to make his first pounce and he's going to run in there and hit the weasel um, I am going to spend a fate point so I want to try and get these guys down as quickly as I can so um, I'm going to use a fate point as I'm on d10s and the weasel blocking is going to be on a d6 okay so 
Uh, best I got was a four. Uh, does, however, beat the Weasels two. So, um, so far I'm winning by two. Um, I did charge in, so I get an extra one there, so that's three. Uh, so I win the fight by three. Uh, I am strong two as well, so that means I'm winning by five. Um, the Weasel didn't have to test anything because he's fearless, so uh, that is five damage to the Weasel. And he is also paralysed as uh, I put the poison on there earlier. So uh, let's start the game. So as such, that is him in trouble. So the Weasel is going to lose his activation. So I'm just going to mark him as activated anyway, so I don't forget, because there's quite a bit going on. Right, so uh, the Hedgehog seeing that and has someone in line of sight, so he's going to make a double move over. Uh, can't fight because it was just over the six, so he's just moved into combat to try and give the Weasel a buddy and help him out. Um, with that in mind, um, Marek charges in against the Hedgehog as well. Can't actually fight this round, but uh, it's moved in. Uh, this Weasel down here is going to move up. Um, Sebastian is going to move across. Still again, nothing to heal at the moment, just sort of holding the centre ground. Um, we we'll roll off to see which one of those goes first. Okay, so it's the dog. He's going to run, run, up to there. Uh, that puts him in strike distance from One Eye, who charges in. So One Eye charges in against the Pug. Uh, so One Eye is also going to use. So he is actually fearless, so we just need to uh, do the test on that. Sorry, I meant fear. Uh, fearsome. So, um, so the hound is on a d6 and the hare's on a d8. Uh, it's a draw, so uh, doesn't get the benefit. Um, and then again on the block, the hare is hitting on a d10, and the dog is blocking on a d6. Uh, right. So the dog did get the six, which is natural six. That takes it up to thirteen. I rolled a nine. Um, oh, actually, I rolled two, so uh, I put a fate in, didn't I? So I um, need to uh, get the zero if I can. And doesn't. So I'll take the nine anyway. Which um, puts me in a situation where the dog is on 13. No, not 15, sorry. I've got nine plus one moving in, 10. So. That natural roll has uh, knackered me there. Uh, and then it's just the mole who is movement four and can get in. So he's gonna charge in. So the mole's gonna hit my uh, my hair. My hair is gonna be blocking on D8. Uh, the mole um, also needs to check for the fear. Um, so it's D8 versus D8 on this one. Okay, and um, in fact, let's roll two different dice. Different colours, that will do. Right, so the white dice is going to be the uh, uh, the raiders. Okay, so he does get minus three as he charges in. Right, so with that in mind, um, it becomes he's hitting me. D8 for me, and a mole is D6. Um, so, yeah, nothing there. The mole comes in, swipes, but nothing happens. Okay, so that's everyone activated. So uh, we'll remove the tokens. And once again, let's start the turn. More beasts coming in, another three. So, um, first one comes on. Another 
pound in the middle. And then another Hedgehog Warrior comes on at the end. Okay, so, lots happening now. Um, still not taking any damage. Uh, I've dished out five to the Raiders, but there's a lot of Raiders on the table now, so they're gonna get that ganging up bonus. So let's see how we get on. Um, so it's the roll off. Uh, so it's D8, D6, D6 being the Raiders, and um, I win 7-2. Okay, so decisions. Uh, do we go with the hair, or do we try and finish off at least one of the weasels with my leader? Um, now my leader does have a shield at least, so, um, and also uh, Sebastian the mage is closer. So I'm going to go with the hair first, and I'm also going to put an extra penny in as well. So uh, he's hitting on D10s and I'm going to go for the mole because I want to try and, if I can, take him out of action rather than necessarily the dog. So again, I need to do the um, fear and presence check and he's okay this time. Um, and what is he blocking on? He is blocking on a D6. Yep. Okay. So I get an eight, the mole only scores a one. Um, so with that in mind, uh, I win that by seven. I then have a double-handed weapon and also strong. So strong takes me up to eight and then the double-handed weapon will give me plus three, I think from memory. So uh, that's going to be a total of strong four. Four added to the seven is 13 damage. Um, so it's quite a hefty blow there to the poor mole. And uh, the mole's in, uh, in a bad way. Okay, so um, with that in mind and him actually activated, the raiders are going to... Uh, actually fight with a better angle of what's going on over here. Okay, so they're gonna fight with the weasel and he's gonna try and hit the, uh, the leader uh, to try and do some damage against him. He does have a buddy, so he's gonna get the plus one. Uh, wound increment wise though, um, he's minus one, so he's getting plus one, minus one, so effectively no difference uh, to his strike roll. He will need to check against the, uh, the fact that I cause fear, and uh, he passes. A bit disappointed. So, with that in mind, and the fact he's got a double handed weapon, so if he can get this off, he has a chance of actually doing some damage. Oh, actually, he's fearless anyway, so ignore that. Um, you passed it anyway. So D8, um, which will be the white dice, and my block is a D8 as well, which is the green dice. Uh, 2 2. Um, so uh, plus one, minus one. Um, gives him nothing extra, so that is uh, no damage there. And uh, it's back over to uh, to myself. So I think we're going to go with Marek, see if he can get a lucky shot against the Hedgehog. Because uh, that seems like it's uh, probably the, the right thing to do. Uh, so the Hedgehog will get plus one to his block roll because of the spines. Um, and it's going to be D6 versus... Um, now, the Mouse doesn't have a, a shield, so he's going to use the sword two-handedly. Um, so that will give him a uh, strong one effectively. It's a D6 versus a D6. So that's nice and straightforward. So the yellow dice in this instance will be uh, my warband. 
Uh, it does have a buddy. Uh, so he wins by two, effectively. Um, then take the spines off, takes him back down to one. Uh, now this mouse is also armed with a light shield, which will take that up to nothing. No, no, nothing happened there. Okay, so that's uh... right. So with that in mind, the hedgehog um, turns to fight back, uh, which will be a mice on a d4. So uh, the hedgehog tries to hit Marek. And uh, Marek gets a perfect roll, and as such dodges that with little, uh, little effort. And um, so yeah, it's um, back over to my warband. And Artemis, the, the wildcat, is going to try and finish off this weasel. So the weasel is on minus one for wound increment. So, uh, so I'm striking on a D10. Again, need to get rid of him, so I'm going to put a fate in. And the weasel will be trying to block on a D6. But it's minus one to the roll. And the best I get is a two, and yet again the weasel has got maximum roll. So again, Artemis struggling, burning through the fate um, and struggling to do a lot of damage. So back over to uh, these guys. So the, the pug um, is going to try and hit the hare using the plus one for um, his buddy. So D6 versus D8 for the hare. And both score a four. Now the uh, the pug does get the plus one for having the the uh, well plus two effectively for having the uh, the friend there. So that takes him up to six. So he wins the roll. Um, and the armor is only light armor, so that gives him tough one. So he does take one damage, which isn't too bad. Uh, so the hair takes one one point of damage. A little flesh wound. Back over to my go. Um, the hair fighting on. I'm going to do a double move with my other mouse to get him in to the fight. And then that's it for me. Uh, this other weasel again will move around and assist uh, against Artemis. So uh, he's on a D6. Again, uh, because he's a weasel stroke stoke, he is fearless. Uh, I'm on D8. So he has moved more than the required amount, so he's going to effectively be on plus three to his strike roll with the fact he's got a buddy there. Um, so it takes him to an eight, however, I scored a perfect eight. So as such, um, the cat survives again. Back over to me. Um, Sebastian, a range of 12 on his spell, so he's actually just gonna, he's gonna move six. He's got the mage's focus anyway. Um, target is a three. Um, I can see line of sight required. So I want a D6. It's not, he's not the greatest spellcaster in fairness. Um, so I need to, uh, to get a three. Uh, which is only a one. Mage's focus only gives me um, I think it's plus one. I don't think there's plus two on that. Just double check. Um, yeah, it's only the plus one. So, uh, fail to cast. Uh, and that is me done. Um, the frog, seeing the mage, has decided he's going to cast his spell uh, back at the mage, uh, which is a target of five. Um, he does get the plus two for standing still, so he does go off and does d8 wounds against uh, Sebastian. Um, so let's see what he gets. He gets the full eight, um, so and it becomes nine because obviously uh, Sebastian's a level one or knows one spell. So he's taken nine damage, and that really is gonna hurt the rat. And then they, so we're gonna go with the mole next. So the mole is going to try and hit one eye. Um, 
so the mole is hitting on a d6. Uh, second, um, 13 damage, so that is going to be uh, minus 3 to his roll off. But he does get a friend, um, so that becomes minus uh, plus 2, so effectively he's at minus 1 still. And the hair is blocking on a d8. And the hair gets a perfect roll versus the mole's four. So again, nothing there. So we've only got really the last uh, got three unactivated models still to go. We've got another weasel who's going to run up here. Even more pressure on the, around here. Another dog. He's going to go running up here into the centre. And another hedgehog who again he can't quite get into the combat. Effectively, he's going to move up to there. So that ends the turn. So, yeah, so far things not going great. We are holding them up a little bit. Um, however, it's not great. And uh, we've got a weasel coming on. And again, coming on on the raider's left flank, which is not good for Artemis. Um, there's him and the two mice there trying to hold off currently four. Um, two in the middle area and then another weasel coming in and again in line there. So, uh, roll off time. Can really do with uh, winning this. We need to try and get rid of some numbers. And uh, this time the Raiders win the roll off and it's uh, their turn to go first. So, um, I think probably the sensible thing here is try and lock that wizard down with nine damage. Uh, try and stop him from going anywhere. So, the dog is going to do a move, move. And uh, engage, engage the mage. Um, so Artemis is going to uh, try and hit the the weasel that's already wounded. Again, he's going to throw in another coin in there. Another fate. Um, so a plus one strike against the. Uh, it's a seven so that's pretty good um, seven versus the two uh, that is a plus five um, so it becomes um, plus six because he's already wounded so that takes it down to one effectively so win by six win by six um, a strong two um, there's eight, um, so that's eight more damage. Takes the uh, the weasel up to thirteen, and uh, he's in uh, he's in trouble. Right, okay. The fight carries on. So uh, the mole is going to try and uh, hit. Uh, Hit the hair over in the uh, the left side or the top of the screen, and does nothing. Um, but he needed to try and do that because uh, the hair next to go is uh, looking to try and finish off the mole. Uh, so the mole is uh, blocking d4 versus the d10 of the hair. Really looking for that perfect roll for the mole. Otherwise, the mole's likely to be in uh, serious damage here, serious trouble. The mole gets a two against the hair's six. Um, so he's already on negative, so he's down to zero. Uh, so the hair wins by six, double-handed weapon. That is enough to take the mole out of action. And uh, so one eye has taken one of the raiders out. However, still plenty more, nine more actually on the table. So it's not good. Okay, so um, back to the raiders. The wounded weasel, uh, in fact the hedgehog's going to go first and he's going to go against uh, Marek, the mouse. So uh, he's going to have a go there. Uh, Marek scores a two, the hedgehog got a three. Um, so the, uh, it does do one point of damage. The little mouse, and then uh, we will go with the so 
Marek taking a blow, his brother Luca armed with his pole arm. Hits him back, so he's going to be hitting on um, plus one strike, plus two, plus three strike because of his buddies. So he's at plus three versus the hedgehog. So it's d6 each. Again, yellow B and me. You can see it on the screen. Um, right, so plus three takes out to seven versus two for the hedgehog. The two becomes a three because he's got a shield. So seven versus three is four damage to the hedgehog. And um, that puts the puts the uh, hedgehog on the first wound increment. The wounded weasel is going to strike at the uh, at the cat. And So the weasel is going to be hitting uh, Artemis. Artemis is blocking on D8 though, and doesn't get enough actually. Well, actually he does because um, with 13 damage on the weasel, he's going to be on minus three. Takes him down to a one. Um, actually, he does have buddies as well. Puts him back up to a three. Uh, so he does win by one, but it's not enough to get through the armor, uh, even with the double-handed weapon. Uh, actually, no, it wouldn't anyway because uh, she's got the shield. Takes him up to three, so it's a draw. Uh, so we don't have to worry about that. Okay, so uh, next for my warband, uh, Marek's going to try and put some more pain on the hedgehog. So again, d6 each. This time the hedgehog is at minus one, and I'm going to be at plus two uh, because my buddies. Um, so it takes me to a six. However, natural six from the hedgehog. And uh, that's going to keep the hedgehog alive for another go. Okay, so I've only got my wizard left, but plenty still to go with the uh, the others. So another weasel attack on my leader, Artemis. But again, um, does take it to a 6-5 with the buddies. Um, and then a 6-2 because of the shield. So again, another failed attempt there from the weasel to try and land a blow on Artemis. So he's living a charm life. Um, we're gonna get another weasel in there now. So this isn't gonna be good, because uh, he's gonna be at plus three. These are two extra bodies, as uh, Artemis is getting. Oh, not good. So the weasel scored a natural six, versus a five, which becomes a six because of the shield. So however the 6 becomes a 13 for the natural roll, and then adding 3 takes it up to 16. So it's a total of winning by 10. Winning by 10. Minus 2 for the armour. And he's natural, takes it down to 8 damage. Uh, that is not good. Um, that is 8 damage on Artemis, which is now put him in a really bad situation. Okay, so what else have we got? Um, so mage is going to try and run for the edge. Another weasel moving up. Hedgehog is going to play the scenario, try and run past the hare. So we've got a couple of the raiders trying to break for the break for the civilians and the loot uh, as that ends the uh, ends the turn and we clear the uh, clear the table a little bit. In fact, it doesn't end the turn because the wizard didn't go. So um, wizard's going to try and break from combat. Um, could be a risk here, but need to get uh, need to get some healing on my on Artemis. So we're going to try and do a breakaway, which will be nimbleness for the um, rat is a six, uh, strike of the dog is a six. So um, 
let's see what we can do. And that's not good because I've just rolled a one and the dog's rolled a six. So I think that could be the end of uh, Sebastian. I think he's well and truly taken out. So we'll just do the math on it. Um, so Sebastian with his wound thresholds is down to zero. Uh, the dog's on 13 plus two for the double handed weapon. Takes him up to um, 15 plus one for being naturally strong, 16. So that's 16 damage naturally plus the nine. That is a lot of damage. And Sebastian is taken out of the game. And that is not good at all at the end of the turn. So um, into this turn and Artemis and his boys do get to go first at least. And uh, try and even up the numbers a little bit down here by trying to take a, a weasel out with Artemis. So he currently has eight points of damage, which is minus two to his roll off. I'm going to put two coins in. So it's effectively going to be three D10 roll versus the D6 of the weasel. Bit overkill, but I need to get these numbers down. And nine is the best I get, which is enough to take the weasel out. Oh, first weasel, should we say? Um, so that is another weasel down. However, it does mean there's one less person fighting, which again, one less to that strike roll. Right. So from the uh, raider's point of view. Um, the pug is going to try and hit um, so one eye gets a natural six uh, they've rolled some nice rolls that takes them up to 13 um, versus six for him so that's going to be a difference of seven and the dog is naturally strong so eight Eight damage to so one eye takes him up to nine in total, which is not good. Okay, so we're gonna go with uh, the go with the pole arm. So you're getting plus one to strike, plus three for his buddy, and the hedgehogs are minus one. So plus three. Uh, which is enough to win the combat, 2-1. So it becomes 5-1. 6-1 because of strong. 6-1, 6-2 because of the spines. So win by four, so another four damage onto the hedgehog. That takes him up to eight. Um, I'm gonna go with uh, first weasel. Fighting against. Again, I need him alive, so I'm going to put a coin in. So I'm going to be on d8s. And I'm going to be at minus two. Uh, so it takes best I can get is a one. It's not looking good. Um, four, five, six, because of the buddies. So they're winning by five currently. I have a shield. Five, two, so uh, six, two. Um, six two, seven two because you've got dual weapons. So you're winning by five. Uh, minus two. It's another three damage onto Artemis. So it takes him up to eleven. Um, so we're going to go with uh, Marek next. Again, he's getting plus two for the roll off. Um, because of his buddy, he's using his sword double handed. So. Again, you can get a decent roll here. So the hedgehog's down to zero, um, even with his spines. Um, that would only give him a two, but he's at more than two minus, so he's on zero. I'm at three, plus two for my buddies is a five point win. And then adding the strong two from the, um, uh, strong one, sorry, from the sword using it one-handed. Gives me six points of damage against the hedgehog. So the hedgehog's in a really bad way. Um, However, the mass still haven't haven't finished the, the hedgehog even though it's the ganging up. Right, okay, so hedgehog's gone. Oh, hedgehog's not gone actually, so the hedgehog's gonna fight and he's gonna 
fight back at Marek. Uh, I'm going to try and uh, do some damage there. So uh, Marek's on a d4. Um, natural both. So uh, 13 versus 11. So um, 13 versus 11. Then we need to deduct the modifiers. So 13 versus 11. Um, 14 points of damage is 1, 2, 3, minus 3 to that. So 13 takes down to 10. That's not enough to do any damage against Marek. So even with the perfect roll, both of them got it. Marek survives. Um, right, so that's the Hedgehog activated. So we'll get the last comet out of the way, which is uh, the one eye. And he is going to be fighting against the, the pug. And he's going to... Uh, so again, fear check for the... And uh, still passed. I haven't got one of these off yet, and uh, that's not good. Uh, poor Artemis is fighting fearless animals, but uh, even the pug is uh, not scared of the of the, of the hare. Uh, so d6 for the hound, and we're d10, um, and we'll put a coin in. So that'll take us down to just two fate left. So 5-1 is the score, and however I'm losing 2 for the fact I am wounded. So I win 3-1, um, I am then strong 1 plus my double-handed weapon, so effectively uh, that will be 4-5-6, uh, so I win by 5, uh, so 5 damage on the pug, at least, I've, uh, at least we're evening that out there a little bit. Okay, right, so that's all of my guys activated. So the frog is going to do a 12 inch run to the board edge. Uh, same with the dog, double double. And that's, uh, oh, and there's another hedgehog over there as well. So they're nearly away. So, uh, critical point in the game. Um, as another weasel runs past, ending the turn. So we've got four raiders, which may well be enough. Uh, in fact, they only need to get three um, off their edge of the board. So it's looking like uh, raiders will win this one. And they also win the, uh, the roll off. Okay, so first weasel, going to uh, try and take Artemis out of the game, and uh, try and take my leader down. Um, I'm going to put a extra one into it, fate, I've only got one fate left now, desperately trying to survive. Uh, fortunately the weasel fluffs his attack with a one, um, so I get a four and a two, so Four one. However, eleven points of damage is going to be just minus two, so it's going to take me down to a two. Um, he does have two buddies, takes him to three two, and then I have a shield three all. So um, survived the first assault from the first weasel. Um, I think what I'm going to do now. Um, do I do I risk it? Okay, so, yeah, I'm going to go with the hair. So, he's hitting on a D10. Uh, let's see, first of all, whether Pug is finally scared of him. Yes, he is. 
So as that obviously the previous turn, the blow obviously hurt him. Um, that has now made him scared of um, of the of the hair. So. You get minus three to this, uh, effectively minus four because of his uh, wound. So he's on minus four to his d6 roll, uh, which puts him on a zero. I am on a seven, but I've got nine points of damage that takes me down to a uh, five. So I'm winning by five at the minute. Uh, winning by five, and then a total of eight damage. Uh, that's going to put the pug on 13 and uh, less of a threat now. Right, okay, so. <clears throat> so the pug doesn't need. To, so the hedgehog's going to try and fight back against the, the mouse. Uh, it's going to go for Marek because he's got one wound and got. Lots of negatives here. 14 um, is minus 3. Uh, so he's on a negative. Um, so nothing there for the hedgehog. Um, Artemis is going to try and hit the uh, hit the last weasel. Going to go with it. Use the final fate point as we're running out of time here. Um, as the raiders are moving through the village. Fishing for that 10 which he gets. So 10 becomes 17, 17 um, minus, the th uh, minus 3 for damage I think, no minus 2 for damage so it takes down to 15, 15 minus the 4 becomes 11, then adding on my strong 13 damage versus the what was healthy um, weasel who is now in uh, big trouble. Um, however, he will fight back. And does nothing in return. Uh, so we've got the two mice and the pug. So Marek first. And the d6 roll off. Uh, four for Marek, three for the Hedgehog. Uh, Marek isn't adjusted other than by the plus two for his buddies. Um, hedgehog's on zero, so that's done six damage. That is the Hedgehog oh, taken out of action by Marek. Uh, the Pug is going to try and uh, fight the Hare. Put some more damage on him if you can. Looking for the natural. Uh, five, and uh, he's got 13 damage. That's minus three, takes him down to a two. Might still be enough, you know. Um, yeah, it is, because the hair won with his damage, takes him down to zero. So the pugs went one by two. He is armed with a double-handed weapon as well, so it's strong five, effectively, because it's plus three, um, naturally one, plus two for the um, double-handed weapon. And then he's one by two, so that takes him up to five, minus the armor. Um, so it's four damage, four more damage onto uh, the hair. Takes him up to 13. I'll find it on this dice. I know it's one of those weird D10s. So 13. Okay, so equal damage there, both on 13. Um, right, so the mouse of the pole arm is just going to move there. So he's not going to get a strike bonus because it's only a small move. Um, but he does get the strike bonus for um, having a pole arm, which is plus one. So. Gets the, the weasel. Oh, that's going to be enough. And it looks like Luca's got a weasel. Um, five, that's on a zero. Um, yeah, that is going to be enough to take the weasel out. So that is four, the raiders down. Um, and that is all of my guys now activated. Which does leave... Um, the frog is nearly off. Uh, this weasel is nearly off. The dog is nearly off. And the hedgehog is off. So the raiders have got one off the table. And la 
last turn. And it's a win on the roll off for myself. So, first thing we're going to do is going to go with Artemis. He's going to try and hit the weasel. Six versus a five. Um, however, with negatives, that is going to be nothing. Okay. Um, the weasel. In fact, the pug's going to go first, I think. Yeah, let's do the pug. So the pug's going to try and take out one eye. He's only got four wounds remaining. Can the pug do it? Um, yeah, he's going to do some more damage. He's won the roll off by one. All the wound modifiers are going to be exactly the same because we've both got 13 damage. Um, so yeah, he wins by one. I've got no shield. So yeah, one damage. Uh, becomes two damage because uh, he's naturally strong. And then a uh, four damage with his double handed weapon. So four points of damage minus one for my armor. There's three more damage, puts him on 16. He is literally uh, one point away from uh, being out of action. And uh, yeah, not good. So uh, Luca, the mouse, is gonna try and take on the, the weasel. Um, so he hasn't moved far enough to gain much of a benefit. But he does get plus two for having the bodies there, plus one for the pole arm. So he's at plus three in this battle. Uh, so it takes him up to six versus four. So he's winning by two. And pole arm gives him strong one. So that's three damage. So we have put some damage on the uh, on the weasel, who now fights back against Artemis, trying to take Artemis out. Um, so and Artemis rolls a natural eight, which keeps him alive and healthy. So the last thing we're going to do is uh, Marek is going to charge round, so he's going to get plus one, effectively, um, so he's on d6 versus d6, he's getting plus three for his buddies, plus, uh, plus one for moving in, so plus four, so if he can get a, he can get a nice natural roll here, and he does, <laughs> so there we are, 13 plus four, 17. 17 minus 5 is um, 13, 12, 12 damage. 12 damage plus the 3, it's not going to be enough. Uh, so it's only taking him up to 15. In fact, 16 damage because he's using his weapon double handed. So again, one point shy of being out of action. Uh, and the weasel is in big trouble there. Okay, so it's just the, the final fight really um, between. The uh, pug and the hare. Can the hare do it? Uh, D10 versus D6. Um, I'm going to be at effectively minus one on the modifiers. And that is not enough. So those two carry on. The remaining three uh, run off the board, which ends the turn with the defenders uh, winning. Uh, sorry, not the defenders, the raiders winning. Um, so all of my guys will get one XP each. And then uh, for the scenario, um, which I rolled is Devastate. Uh, four or more of the enemy out of action. Well, yes, there was. There was the mole, um, two weasels, and a hedgehog. Um, so because of that, I all get two experience. So that's three experience points for my warband. Um, and only uh, Sebastian was taken out of action in the end. Okay, so game one in the campaign hasn't gone according to plan for the free beasts and Artemis' crew. Um, failure to deal with uh, the weasels early doors, really. Um, had two guys that caused fear, one on each side, hoping that that would really sort of swing the, swing the fights. Um, unfortunately, it didn't. Uh, weasels are immune to it, and obviously every roll bar one that the pug had to make um, he passed and he, obviously in the last round nearly got him out but uh, failed to do so so uh, yeah Raiders uh, raided simple as that um, so post game um, only get uh, got three experience points each uh, one for taking part in the in the battle um, and then obviously uh, extras for um, taking out at least 
four of the uh, enemy warband, which it did. So we need to see whether um, the the rat um, has uh, well, yeah, has, has failed. So uh, need to uh, need to see if I can get a six on a d6. Not hard, is it? Okay, so here we go. See if we can get a six because that's the target we need. And fortitude of the rat is a six. Uh, no, we get a three. So he is taking a permanent injury, uh, which is a six. Uh, oh my god, he's got brain trauma. <laughs> Whoopsie. Uh, and a four. Um, so his awareness has gone down by one. So uh, yeah, that's not good. He's done to uh, D D four now. Um, however, he does get two experience points for that, which um, along with the two he got for the actual secondary mission, because he still scored that, uh, that will actually give him a uh, upgrade. So um, he has actually gone up a level, effectively. Um, so D12 on that one. Uh, we get an eight. Uh, so stat increase, which again is a D12. And a five. His fortitude's actually gone up, um, which, um, is that the one that's needed for natural spells? Or is that the, the wrong one now? Because that would be typical, wouldn't it? Let's have a quick look. <laughs> um, if it is um, for natural magic, then that is perfect. If not, um, it is fortitude. Yes, so that's excellent. So, uh, well, that ties in with the rat nicely. He's... Uh, yeah, he's uh, got a bit bit better at casting spells at least. Uh, so the rest of my guys will go uh, wandering. Uh, I think we still get to, yeah, there's nothing in there that says we can't wander. Uh, so we're gonna sort of see how we get on with the remaining guys. Um, I'm not bothered about sort of building any extra bits. So we're just all gonna go wandering. I think that's the simplest thing to do. So, uh, Marek. Uh, good, good start that is. Uh, gets a 12. Uh, so he's found a farm. Um, so he gets uh, he has work on a farm and gets four nine pennies for Marek. Uh, Luca uh, also <laughs> they stay together. They do uh, roll twelve as well. So again, um, doesn't look, no he didn't work so hard. Uh, he only got four pennies. So that's a total of thirteen now. Um, who will survive? We've got the hare. So uh, thirteen. Uh, he's um, so he's camped out a local well, um, and he's charging a levy for that because he's uh, he's four d six because he's a large. So three, three, one. Uh, so another nine pennies, which will take me up to twenty two pennies. And then my leader, uh, again, he's going to go uh, wandering as well and rolls a two. Uh, finds a gunsmith. Um, befriended him. Um, so any black powder weapons you currently own, Master Smith, so doesn't do any benefit. So uh, there we have it. So 22 extra pennies. Um, I need to do the upkeep, uh, which I have. Um, okay, so I've got a large, two large, so that's four, um, four, medium, five, and two small. Uh, six, seven, so minus seven. So um, I've got 45, 38 pennies. So it should maybe get me one more guy um, for the next uh, next engagement. Uh, so yeah, on to scenario two uh, in the solo campaign. So uh, stay tuned, uh, see how uh, Artemis and his group get on uh, having lost the first mission. So I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> 